Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome the Master of Ceremonies for FETC's 2015 Tech Share Live, Adam Bello! So, we're back again. Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, there's a lot of you and I feel people are coming in. Come on down, come on down. The front people have showered and just squeeze in with them. And uh, we're just gonna go. If you can go to the slides, we'll just get started. Yeah? All right, cool. So welcome, it is FETC 2015 and I'm really, really excited to be here with all of you. I know you're excited, so let's just get this rolling. We'll get it loaded and uh, we'll be off and on our way. Sorry, it takes a second to load up. You remember those days when things took more than a couple of seconds? You had to type in commands to get things going. All right, let's load it up. So, welcome to the FETC 2015 TechShare Live. And uh, we are here in beautiful Orlando. And uh, in, it is 2015, and you've made your way here to the conference center. Now you have to decide which device to tweet with. So cell phone, tablet, laptop, desktop, or watch Twitter. You can type that in. Uh, the name of our first uh, participant and presenter will be Hall Davidson. And um, you know, Hall is going to take this journey with all of us. Oh. Now he has to decide whether he fords the river or not. Should we have him ford the river? Yes. You never ford the river. Now Hall has dysentery. Oh well. And unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the one, the only, Hall Davidson. Come on up, Hall. Back from the dead. <laughs> Come on. There he is. <laughs> All right. Well, at least it wasn't scurvy or rickets. Uh, anyway, so here we go. Hey, kids. We all know what time it is, right? Sing along if you know the words. Here it is. All the way from sunny California, another Californian. We have two East Coasters and two West Coasters. The one, the only, Leslie Fisher. Come on up here, Leslie. I'm giving you a little uh, die job over there. Uh, sorry, I don't know. Do you like that? I could be a beautician. And we'll give some balloons. It's very festive up in here. And the Leslie Fisher, thank you. All right. so. That's great, but there's one more, and we've been looking all over the world for her. Everyone's trying to find her, so let's see. Can you tell me where she might be? Let's see if we can find her. Hmm, let's check it out. Do you guys know where? Where in the world is Kathy Schrock? Kathy Schrock, everyone. All right, woo! All right. And that is the, uh, the tree over there. I'm Adam Bello. I'm the Master of Ceremonies for today. I'm very excited to be here. Um, and that's your lineup of folks in uh, all of its 8-bit glory. So there you go. Uh, I, I do start with a warning. It's important to let you know that you should hide your wallets during this presentation. Beware of the impulse to buy things showcased on the stage. I fell prey to it myself last year with that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kathy. <laughs> all right. And uh, let's see, the hashtag, there's some confusion sometimes I hear, hashtag FETC, FETC 2015, 15, it is hashtag FETC. So, and if you don't know what Twitter is, this might help you out. Check it out, I'm sending you a tweet, tweet. That's not how it works, Grandpa. Ah, huh. uh, a reply, I'm trendy. <laughs> So there you go. Now, I know a couple years ago, I got the stupid idea, crazy, funny, whatever idea, to do a little musical parody. And uh, I did it again last year. And this year, you know, I don't think it's really professional to do one. Uh, I'm doing part of the closing, and there's a governor on that panel. It seems like out of place. But then I was on the plane, and I was listening to my music, and I got a little inspiration. So... Without further ado, let me butcher <laughs> a song. And, and I'd like your help because this is way out of my key. Uh, it's called Tweet It Out in the kind of sort of maybe style of Taylor Swift. And the words will be up here like karaoke, sing it loud, sing it proud, and join in. I'm online too late. 
I got EdTech on my brain. That's what people say. Mm -hmm. That's what people say. Mm -hmm. I, go I go to, to too many ed camps. camps. <laughs> At least one in every state. Every Saturday. Mm -hmm. Every Saturday. Mm -hmm. And I keep tweeting. Can't stop, won't stop sharing. It's like I've got this yearning in my mind saying I want to learn some more cause my students gotta learn 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 and my textbooks they can burn 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 baby I'm just gonna tweet 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 I tweet it out I tweet it out the makers gotta make 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 and we can all create 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 baby I'm just gonna tweet 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 I tweet it out I tweet it out so thank you all for not singing. Yes. Oh, thank you. That's Taylor Swift. We just took a picture of her. She's crying over her Coke, Diet Coke. Um, yeah, and by the way, when I say sing along, it means try not to, you know, drown me out. Well, anyway, so good. Uh, if you want to share that horribleness with all of your friends, you feel free. It's uh, bit.ly slash tweet it out with a capital T, I, and O. And that's that. Someone's got a picture. It's already there. Good. So it's exciting time to be in education technology. Technology in general is just amazing. I feel like this session always slants more to the crazy tech stuff that you're going to impulsively want. Uh, it was International CES Week this week. There are lots of great things that were going on and being shown. For example, if you want to take selfies, there's the selfie brush. Or if you want to take pictures of other parts of your body, you can get the Belfie stick, which is an actual real device. This is not, anyway. So. Uh, there's lots of great gadgets out there. I'm going to share a few of the favorite things that I've seen recently. Um, my kids are loving, loving the Kano computer. It's 150 bucks now. It was 100 if you got in on the Kickstarter. Uh, they put it together. It's a machine that you build yourself. You have ownership over putting the parts together, learning how the computer works, and then being able to take the pieces and learn how to code with it. It is incredible. Uh, this video that I took off their website is basically just the gorgeousness. There's an instruction book that tells you, like, this is the brain of the computer, and this is the speaker, and this is the case, and, the, you know, it lets you go through all the parts. It's an incredible device. You need a monitor with it, so you can hook it into a TV like we have done at our house, or you can hook it into an old monitor, or whatever, a young monitor, I guess. Um, you do amazing stuff with it. I recommend this highly. It's great to have kids kind of get in there. It has a, a great Minecraft module where you can not only play Minecraft, but also learn how to program in Minecraft, both the JavaScript as well as like drag and drop, like kind of a scratch format. So as I said, 150 bucks is incredibly great. Uh, Circuit Scribes is something I shared last year very quickly, but I've gotten them and played with them, and they are incredibly cool. It is a pen that writes with conductive ink. So you can actually take these tiny little circuits, it's relatively inexpensive as you can see, it starts at 25 bucks, and build your own things. And it comes with buzzers, it comes with motion sensors, it comes with LEDs, there's lots of amazing things you can do with this. So I recommend this, it's a great way to kind of get started with the maker kits, really, really cheap and easy. A little less purposeful, I guess, but incredibly cool, is the hash key. If you're a Twitter chat user and you always find that that hashtag is kind of tripping you up, you can get this one key keyboard, USB style, that lets you for 25 bucks just hit it and get a hashtag button. And uh, this device actually, this is the one I would strongly recommend out of all these, this is probably my favorite, the Go key, well besides the Kano. The Go key is a, started out as an idea for a keychain that has a battery pack inside of it that will charge your phone on emergency two hours of charge. But then they kept on adding stuff. For example, like the tile, it'll let you find something, like find your keys or find your phone. It also will allow you to use as a remote, so you can kind of click it to go through songs and uh, what else does it have in there? Flash memory, so you can get 64 gigs, uh, 28, 128 gigs, etc., of memory inside of it. It's pretty amazing. And speaking of the tile, that is something that I have on both my keychain uh, as I don't have my keys on me, I'm going to grab for it. Uh, on my keys, as well as in my bag in the airport, it tells you uh, through a tracking tool exactly where the uh, device is or where, where the object is that's on it. Incredibly cool, 25 bucks, they last for a year, so it is something you want to renew if you don't like it, if you do like it. Single Q is something I just ordered for my TV. It allows you to use motion control, kind of like, Adobe, uh, like Microsoft Connect to kind of uh, talk to your TV. This guy who looks a little swarmy is gonna explain it and so show it. I want to change channels, all I gotta do is this. Switch between devices, this. So it works with Nest, Apple TV, all sorts of cool stuff. Watch my 
So I can kind of lower the temperature in my house while my wife says to me, it's so cold in here, without her even knowing. I'll be like, hi, honey, how are you? Lower. I don't know. Uh, if you want to stay cool, I love this cooler, the coolest. I can't wait for mine to come. It has a blender, a uh, Bluetooth speaker, a battery pack for a charger, LED lid light, and uh, oh yeah, and it's a cooler. So it does some really neat stuff. I happen to love that. And I have to show you something free that really might be useful for you in your classroom for your visual learners. Here's something called Wiki Galaxy, which is starting to take all of the content of Wikipedia and put it into a visual interface that you literally zoom around in 3D space. Wiki Galaxy, it is free. It is very, very cool. And I definitely would recommend checking out. So I am actually going to hand this over now to our excellent presenter, Kathy Schrock, and you'll hear from this fine panel. So let's hear it for Kathy. Oh, here for Adam. I'm not going to make you sing it, nor sing it. Okay. So when I travel, I always take a bunch of new gadgets with me. I wanted to share some of those with you. I bought the selfie brush for $15 because it's really easy to hold your phone. It's available for the uh, iPhone 5 and 5S, but soon out for the 6 and the Galaxy. But it's also nice to be able to comb your hair with it, so you always look perfect in your selfies. Some of you don't have to worry about that. My favorite suitcase started out as an Indiegogo project. I really bought this one. It's called the Blue Smart. It cost $280, but I think, I hope, it's going to be so worth it. From an iOS app, I can lock it and unlock it, weigh it, track its location, be notified if I accidentally leave it behind, and find out more about my travel habits. I can also charge my phone six times. So let's watch a little video. Pull the handle, and the app will tell you the exact weight of your carry-on so that you never have to check it because you pack too much. God knows what a suitcase has to go through. Forget about keys or combinations. Control the lock from the app. And if for any reason you need to part ways with your Blue Smart, worry not, it will automatically lock itself. Life's too short to fight for an outlet. Blue Smart will recharge your electronic devices with our super powerful built-in battery. So relax. Blue Smart will alert you if you ever leave it behind, or if it finds a new friend. And if it's ever lost, you'll be able to track its location. You will breeze through airport security thanks to easy access to your electronic device. I, I certainly hope they tell TSA that I can breeze through, because I can't imagine <laughs> what they're going to do when they see that come through. When I'm out and about, of course, I always want to look my best, being Carmen San Diego. I love my My Case Couture phone case, which has a protective iPhone case, but also matching nail polish. So it comes in many different kinds. It's $30, which I think is a bit pricey, but I'm sure you can find it on the remainder shelf somewhere. And of course, I use my Mia case more often. It's a case, and you open it up, and the makeup is right in the back, and a mirror for your iPhone. And it's only $40, and it included the makeup. <laughs> When I'm out on a case where I might have to conduct some mechanical work, I use my in-one multi-tool utility case. It's a case that includes a blue ballpoint pen, a red ballpoint pen in case I have some grading to do, a Phillips head screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, nail file, tweezers, scissors, toothpick, and a kickstand. At $45, it was cheaper than one of those red knives with the crosses on them. I'm all about the bling, but I value functionality also. The Chill Slap Stylus looks like a slap bracelet, but it's a stylus for any mobile device. For $15, you probably have to get one. But one piece I bling that I do show off is my Ringley. It's only 195 small dollars, and it is quite the rock. I use my phone to set up what things I want to be notified about on my ring.
so you can change the colors. It has little lights. So I'm very conscious of keeping in shape when I'm traveling around the world, so I run a lot. I use my Sensoria Fitness socks and monitor to keep track of my running. The $179 socks have pressure points built in, and the monitor has an accelerometer. Just to make sure they fit into your running shoes. When I'm not out running, of course, I'm always riding my bicycle. I love my 60, but I'm always in such strange cities. So I love my $60 Schwinn Cycle Nav, which has a built-in GPS and provides turn-by-turn -turn directions with spoken directions and lights. And I can even use it in the car if I rent a car. Schwinn Cycle Nav guides your ride with turn-by-turn -turn navigation right on your handlebars. Perfect for the fitness enthusiast, everyday commuter, or weekend explorer. Powered by the intelligent Schwinn CycleNav app on your smartphone, CycleNav signals you with lights and spoken directions to guide you on your route. See where to go, even in bright sunlight. Flashing turn signals show you when to turn. Here, when to turn. Turn right now. Clear spoken directions tell you a turn is coming. Use the CycleNav app on your smartphone to enter any destination in the continental U.S. and multiple routes are created to choose from. Find the best route by comparing details like distance, estimated ride time, elevation change, and estimated calorie burn. Want to stop somewhere along the way? Drop waypoints to customize your route. CycleNav connects with your smartphone through... Okay, you get it. So, and if there's any triathletes, Kathy Parker-Jones, in the group, we know that this is something that she will probably has already ordered while I've been talking. So. The last time I was home, I don't get home very much, I'm always traveling, I was able to make a movie about the Internet of Things. And for those of you that do not, have not really converted yet, it's the interconnection of embedded computing devices within the existing Internet structure in internet infrastructure of your home, work, office, or school. My daughter and husband graciously allowed me to share this with you. This is the cat that drank the milk and let in the dog that jumped on the woman who brewed the coffee. Brew coffee. That woke the man who was late for work. All right, I gotta go. And drove the car. Driverless mode engaged. That found the parking spot. Find parking space. Parking space found. That alerted the door. That opened the control room. Hey, Bob. That secured the data. That directed the turbines. That powered the sprinklers. That watered the grass. That fed the cow. That made the milk. That went to the store. That reminded the man to buy the milk. It was poured by the girl who loved the cat that drank the milk. The internet of everything is changing everything. Cisco, tomorrow starts here. And for those of us that are library media specialists, we know that this is kind of like the napping house, if you remember that book. One of my favorite travel apps that I use all the time when I'm out and about is Flightboard. I can tell when arriving at any airport in the US or around the world, what the departure and arrival boards say within the airport, which is very nice when you're sitting on the tarmac, you have eight minutes to go, at least you know what gate you're going to have to run for when you get inside. It was only $3.99, and it's good for iOS and for Android. Sometimes when I'm on the road, I don't have any Wi-Fi access, but I need to mirror my iPad screen to my laptop and make a recording to send somebody something. With iOS 7 or 8 on the iPad and Yosemite on the Mac, this is now simple to do. You simply open QuickTime, file, new movie recording, although you, you kind of think you want to do screen recording, new movie recording. Using that little drop-down carrot to the right of the record button, you choose your iPad as your camera and your iPad as your microphone, which brings the sound over. Oh, I, f I think I forgot to say your iPad needs to be plugged in via USB to your laptop. And then there it is on the desktop. You simply hit record, and your tendency is to start slamming at your desktop screen, but you have to actually work on your iPad for it to work. 
On a recent trip to China, I saw this really interesting thing. It's a mobile phone sidewalk. Let me show it to you in a little larger. As you can see, there's a line drawn in the sidewalk, and the people who are texting and walking are required to stay on the left-hand side to keep things moving and keep them safe from harm, basically. I get a lot of time on the road to investigate new things that are coming out, and one is the circlet bracelet. I'm not really sure if it's real or a hoax, so don't buy into it yet. But it is interesting. <laughs> There's rumors out there that it's really bogus and a fake, so don't invest in it on the site quite yet. It is pretty neat, though. I'm also on planes a lot, and I love, love, love the SkyMall catalog. I had to order this right away while I was on the plane because it was just so unique. Looking for a bag that's a true eye catcher? Meet Winky, a compact crossbody bag, perfect for tucking away your basic necessities. This fun must-have features a 3D realistic-looking eye that actually winks at people as you pass them. It comes in durable black and white synthetic leather with polyester, and features a full zipper closure, a back zipper pocket, two interior mesh pockets, and an eject. Ah, really? You're gonna have to watch it again. Sorry. You get the idea. I'll move on. Anyway, the funniest part about that was actually the commercial. Um, I adore new tech and like my technology to work for me. So I just invested in this personal home robot on Kickstarter. I didn't really invest in it, but they wrote me a couple emails the day before yesterday for only one thousand one hundred ninety-five dollars. But it's almost worth it. World's first artificial intelligence personal robot. She's your welcome friend at any hour. Good morning, Thomas. Time to get up. Good morning. It seems like you had a good night's sleep. Eight full hours and a good resting heart rate. Thank you. Your meeting with Jane is at nine thirty. I put the coffee on. She can interface with household devices, and she's also a personal stylist. What do you think? Why don't you try the blue tie with it? Good idea. She's your world-class office assistant, using artificial intelligence algorithms to analyze data quickly and efficiently. We plan to run a marketing campaign on the Upper East Side of New York. What do you think about that name? This neighborhood has a very promising outlook for this campaign. With 25,000 housing units, also 82% of people living there have a college degree. I think that's the right one for us. Sorry to interrupt, guys. Thomas has a lunch date with Chloe in 15 minutes. She just posted a bunch of photos on Facebook about her trip to New York. Thank you. I just sent the meeting notes to you and Thomas, as well as your support. When you're at your most creative. Hey, I ordered those paints that you asked for. Also, for lunch, I ordered you some falafel from your favorite restaurant. You're the best. She can also be a hands-free helper around the house. Hey, need some help in here? Okay, raise your hand if you think she's going to get really irritating. <laughs> cubes. She's even a personal security guard. So she can watch your house. Um, anyone who knows me knows that I love to hang out in coffee shops, but the hustle and bustle and the noise helps me really get my work done. However, in my travels, I can't always get to a coffee shop or find one. There is a great app that is web-based and also available for Mac and iOS devices called Coffeeativity. It simply plays coffee shop sounds that, when listened through your headphones, sounds like you're in a Starbucks. So there you go. That's awesome. So I'm going to save my wow item for the final round. But thank you very much for your attention, and I'll see you around the world. That was awesome. What? So so who ordered the robot is what I want to know. Because like I was three quarters of the way there until she comes in and wakes the guy up, and I'm like. 
there's something very weird about this. Like that Twilight Zone episode, like, don't you want to play with little Janie? Yeah, it's a little creepy. But anyway, I'm not going to eat up any of this guy's time. She gave you two and a half minutes. I'm splitting the difference between you and Leslie. We're, these are very time-hungry and desk-hungry folks. Right. So without further ado, Mr. Hall Davidson. Thank you Take it much. away. And uh, Adam, you are awakened by an alarm clock, aren't you, every day? I'm just no, saying. No, I'm not. I wake up to the sun and birds. What are you talking about? Really? Yeah. Wow, that's very brutal. Uh, how many out there are classroom folks? Classroom folks? All right, so I, I tried to pick things that will, one way or another, uh, impact eventually uh, classroom instruction and the, the material, because I'm, I'm going to kind of move through these fast, because last year I didn't get through half of them. So even with Kathy's time, so you can download these now. The, this whole section is right here. Don't, don't download it right now. Wait till Leslie starts to talk. But um, anyway, it's up there. Before I get started, though, I did want to do this. Um, last year, if you're, how many of you were here last year? Remember, everybody up here was wearing Google Glass. Remember that? So they've now sort of been retired, but I just want to, um, now we have one out of the uh, four. I thought it's time to send them to, uh, to tech heaven. And to do that, I brought a laser disc, and this way we can beatify the uh, disc. Here we are. There we are. OK, so that's it for How many of you remember laser discs? Uh, OK, anyway, they're like big CDs. How many remember CDs? OK, that's like, never mind. Yeah, that's right. So uh, uh, these are the categories that we're going into. Toys, this world of ours, uh, reading tools, and sounds to, sound to be seen. Uh, the first is this toy. It's an uh, Ubali. Anybody seen Ubali? Anybody play with Ubali? So they're here, and I realize that you can't really see it up here very well, even on camera. So we're going to use the tapes. But this is on Amazon. For some weird reason, they go from $9 to $25. So I'm not sure why. But this is, uh, this is what an Ubali does. So it'll do games, but as soon as this is, and it's for children, right? And as soon as I thought about games, it reminded me of this, which scared me a little bit. Now you can't actually play global thermonuclear war with the Ubali. Uh, but you can do other things. It's kind of an instructional uh, creature, so I'll show you how that, some, of, some of the ways that it interacts. And it does have the microphone and the speaker, so it does have some interactivity with people that are playing with it. It's intended for longer children, but it can kind of run up on its little guide to age 13. Do you want to play a game? Yes. Okay, listen carefully. This is a counting puzzle. Oh, I have an itch. Can you scratch my ears, please? Yeah. So it interacts and does things like that. Do you want to listen to some music? Yes. Now the, the video is from Think Geek. I think the reason why this could be good is, uh, do you know uh, um, a student that would interact better not with a person in their face? Um, so maybe for this, because remember, it, the Ubali is an app that will go in here, but you could also do FaceTime in here or something else. How many think that would be a useful thing for some students to have this? So the phone goes directly inside here, and if you go to the app, you'll see little kids playing with it, but it goes here, and then as you saw, it taps, and then the face opens up here. So anyway, that's kind of cool. One of the things I thought was interesting about the Ubali is the way they get their content, and I'll show you this quick video. This is a... Um, a video of the CEO, the woman that's the CEO of Ubali, and it's, a, it's an interview show on the web that only interviews people going around a racetrack for one lap. So she's wearing a helmet, is a little nervous, but listen to what she says about, about how she uses teachers. How do you build content? Uh, so we have a team of 20 teachers okay. that free left right for us. Okay. Um, they're actually sending us um, a full lesson plan that's designed for our toy. And then we hire the top two of that batch. Wow. So, um, you know, that's a, a fundamental shift in how it's been done. So, we should, you know, she gets kind of nauseous as, as she goes around, and then she holds up Ubali, who seems to be doing fine. But the idea is they do get lesson plans from teachers, and then they hire two out of the people that apply for that. The other game that I think has implications is this one. It's called Anki Drive. Anybody have an Anki Drive? 
This I found out because two people over Christmas I knew bought it and said, um, you have to have this, or you have to see it at least. So this is um, uh, like a racing game, and they clearly are marketing it for boys, but I'm not sure it's just for boys. But it comes as a roll-up sheet, and it rolls out, and there's a circuit board inside, and you program the cars, which know the senses in the car. So th let's listen to the developer explain it. Uh, a racing game where the cars are extremely, extremely intelligent. So um, as you get better, they get better, and they're going to try and shoot you off the track, and uh, okay. they're going to race against you, and uh, they're going to evolve over time. So we turn the car on, and then I'll go into the garage, and one of the first things I'll do is I'll hold the car near the phone, and you see that the phone was able to detect using um, proximity um, that the car was nearby. So we see our car. So it uses Bluetooth low energy, which is allow allows us to read the signal strength. And signal strength is roughly correlated with distance, and that's um, is what en enables us to uh, determine the, the the car is being held nearby. Okay, so. We'll tap and connect to the car. So we have 1,000 upgrade points, and that's enough for us to put an upgrade on the car. So we'll hit upgrade here. We have just enough points to the supercapacitor, so we'll hit that. And what will happen is this upgrade will get uh, permanently written into the car so that if you trade a car with a friend or you sell a car to someone else, that upgrade lives with the car forever. So that's pretty cool. It means that as you, as you get some tricks and as you move around, you accumulate points which stay with the thing. So it's kind of the Internet of Things, but right in front of you. So it's kind of cool. This is what they show you in their marketing. They try to take the, the augmented features and make it more real. So you can see why they target boys for this. But you, have, you buy shields and you buy weapons if you want and ways to get around the track more. And uh, that's the way he does it. So again, boy game, but I think it's not going to be that long before um, we start building, kids themselves are going to start coding this, just like they're doing with Lego now sometimes. So this is a picture in the UK where, where every kid from pre-K all the way through high school has to take coding. They've now made that part of the national curriculum in the United Kingdom. And I think how much longer before really we start hacking into or getting the, you know, the APIs for uh, Oobly or for a game like that. All right, so a last toy. This is, a, uh, this is for adults, but this was uh, just at CES. This is from HP. It's called the Mini Stream. It's a full-blown computer for $179. You get a Windows certificate. So it's a Windows machine for $179, bucks, which is pretty good, or two for $358. Let the math sink in. Anyway, so you can see you hold it in your hand. So that's not bad. It really is, is sort of a Windows machine that's going after um, uh, the Chromebook because it's doing all its stuff in the cloud. But 179 bucks, that's pretty good. I went back and uh, used this little app to see what it would have cost when they released Windows in 1985. And in 1985 dollars was 81 bucks, right? 81 bucks for, for that machine. So it just tells you exactly how much these machines are sort of dropping. All right, so uh, the, uh, the next thing is the world of R's. Uh, this is a little augmented reality, a little virtual reality stuff. And I was recently, and you were recently in China. I just love saying this. I was in London recently. I was in London. And the university, the, excuse me, the Museum of London has gone around and taken pictures from their archives of the streets of London and overlaid them on top of the real London. So when you walk around with this app, as you can see, you can, and I wish I'd made this off my own phone because it was really cool the way the images came in, but it tells you where the places are. You tap the pins and it gives you the information about what, what went on at that time. And if you tap the 3D view, when you hold it up, you actually get the images of the past overlaid on top of what's real now. So it was very cool to walk around. You click the 3D view and you're in a spot that's on the pin, and you see what it was like back in the day. Is that not cool? Which means that uh, these are pictures from, that uh, I took that you've got the, um, you know, World War II London that overlays as soon as you hold your device up. It's an iPad or an Android, and there it is. Imagine this. This is web-based, but so you're in France, and you can look around and actually see what it was like, you know, why they're not speaking German in France right now, right? And or if you're on the beaches at Normandy, imagine being able to look around and actually see what took place in that thing at the same time, which I think is very cool, right? So they, in New York, somebody's done this with uh, old crime photos. So this is current New York overlaid with the black and white photos at the time. This is kind of fun. This is the police talking a woman off the ledge. She's having none of it. But that's, uh, 
So the, in New York City, of course, they took a lot of those pictures, and now you can walk around and actually see what it used to be like, which is another reason why you want to keep buildings and why you want to keep parks, because they hold some history. So could you do this in a classroom? Yes, you can take pictures. Now imagine being able to look at a classroom if the layout's the same, and it usually is, and being able to show a class the previous year's class, who was sitting in that seat, who was there, who was there before. In fact, I did it with here. This is, I'm holding up my device. We're now going to see the, the stage before Leslie. So Leslie's there, and now let's look at it through the, uh, switch over to the iPad. Here we go. Look, there's, um, notice there's no Leslie in the picture, see? Okay, that has no effect at all. Anyway, that's, um, you know, we spent a lot of time setting that up and just no response. It's as if I could see through Leslie. Anyway, so uh, the idea of being able to overlay images on top is one of the pow powerful parts of, uh, of augmented reality. So let's, um, when you're in trouble, go to Ta Taylor Swift is what I think. So this is an app called the Taylor Swift Experience. Has anybody seen this before? This to me really is the next level of instructional media. So we've got media now. You've got media that can, uh, that can live on a, on a mobile device, right? Kids can watch stuff at home. You can assign material for them to see. But here's where it's going next. So this is the Taylor Swift video. And uh, I'm going to start it. But the cool thing about this is that this is a, this is a video. And you can kind of hear it, but he here's the video action as it comes in. And if you're watching the music video, that's what you see. But I don't have to follow that action. I can actually look around, look at the ceiling, look at the floor. The music video has gone on through that door up there, but I don't have to go into that door if I want. I can look around inside the video. So imagine you're watching a video of a national park, but you don't have to follow the theme. You can actually stop and zoom in to see what's going on or go around and see what else is happening. I can actually go up and follow it if I want to through the door and then I'm in the, the next section. So here's the here's the next um, the next place, and again I can either follow the video or ignore Taylor Swift completely. I can look at the ceiling, I can look at the floor, but for a moving video, that's a pretty cool thing, don't you think? So it means that in the future you're going to be able to take a video that you see and you instruct with now, and you're going to be able to change the point of view. So ah, that was pretty. I'd be able to think that's going to be a cool thing. How many think it's absolutely a useless thing to see on a? Anyway, the uh, the ability to ignore the point of view of the video maker and go and look at the sets and stuff. I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, that's, uh, that's that. So uh, next, I'd, so here are some reading tools. I think these are um, also killer tools. Now, if you were here at the close of FETC last year, you saw Russian talk about this. But this is a site called Newsla, newsla.com. Newsla is very cool. It takes a piece of content, and you can change the reading level on it. How many of you have had the experience where you have kids with different reading levels in your class? Like, yeah. So this is a story about, this is the maximum reading level. 13-year-old entrepreneur raises VC funding for Braille printer. That's the maximum level. It says, last December, seventh grader Shubham Banerjee asked his parents how blind people read, and so forth. Or I can scroll it down, and I can get the same content, but for a lower Lexile reading level. So now, instead of saying, 13-year-old uh, entrepreneur raises VC funding, which we get, it says, curious 13-year-old invents a printer. Uh, last December, Shubham Banjari asked how blind people read. His dad told him to Google it. So you've got a site where you can pull out content, quizzes in there too. Same content, different reading levels. How many people think that's a good thing? Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty neat thing. So here's something else that's good for reading. This is an app called Spritzlet. And um, if you did speed reading in the old days, you kind of remember how this sort of worked. But this is um, Spritzlet, and I pulled up a, uh, a site this is um, a, the Gutenberg site. Oop, where are you? Here we are. And Spritzlet, when you click on it, it goes into your toolbar, and it lets you read at the same time. So we're going to read Tale of Two Cities. It's going to scroll out a little bar for us. Let's, let's do this. Look. Here it comes, keyboard shortcuts. So I can actually get the content in a little window. Isn't that kind of fun? So that's how that works. And let me, let me try this one more time. Let's do it because in here somewhere you're going to see one, two, three, four, and then read, read, read. See if you get this at the same time. One, two, three, four, and just say it out loud if you see it. Okay, ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, read, read, read. 
Okay, you're not reading at the 450 word level. Let me turn that down. Anyway, you get the idea. It's a way to actually grab content without having to scroll up and down, which I think for some people makes a big difference. Okay, so let's go back to that. That's、um, the book was taken from Gutenberg.org, a great place to pull out public domain books and read them. You can download them in a lot of different formats, but it's pretty cool. And the app is called Sprislet. All right, so in the world of、uh, these world of R's, as we're talking about, we saw augmented reality. This is virtual reality, and this got me very excited. I was at a school board conference, and the people had come to set up vocational education with virtual tools, which I think is really important. We got to emphasize vocation more in this country. We're going to start doing that, but now we can actually use the tool technology to do it. So this is a welding group. So the welders had come and set up this this site. And here's the welding, and you're actually looking at it through a helmet. I'll show you an example. I should have started with the helmet video, but if you look through, well, actually, let me let me do the second one. Here's um, this is a superintendent of Napa County holding a welding tool. That's the welding helmet, but inside she's actually seeing the weld that takes place, but the weld is virtual. So. You have that. I mean, it's a little thick, but you would want to do that the whole way. See this right here? That's something that was already there. That's what you want the whole root to look like. That's called the root pass. So that means that how cool is that? That you can set up materials and get skill sets for all the things that we used to call industrial arts and do it in a virtual way, which I think is pretty. Now these machines are expensive. You have to commit to it. But if we're going to move to the trades and we're going to to Use technology to free it from those big places where you had to come in, and the big machines were all set up, and it was tricky. You can do it this way virtually. I think it was pretty cool. This is actually a、um, a BMW mechanic, and take a look and see. This is what's this is already out there. So here's the virtual glasses that you put on, because you've got a repair to make, and the it does a an augmented overlay of the car. So that's the part he's going to change, right? It's not going to do it for him, but it shows him what to do. The screws are up here. You're going to take the data, then you can actually do the screwing where the virtual, you know, the augmented screws take place. But you can go through the whole operation that way. And people think that's going to be useful. I mean, that's pretty good. You're looking at the thing, and it tells you what to do. So it helps you scaffold your way into those arts. Okay, if you talk about augmented reality, this just came out, but this is pretty cool. Uh, we can't fit all of us inside an Oculus. We'd have to do it this way. So here's a video of this. But when you're wearing an Oculus or any of these any of these、uh, augmented reality, excuse me, virtual reality places, you literally go into a place where you're 360 and looking around. You won't find Taylor Swift, but you'll see that. But this is an app that lets you switch by a hand gesture from the virtual world into the real world. So here's the virtual world. Leap makes this, and then you do the hand gesture, and now you can drink a Coke. And then go back into the augmented reality world. Now, this may not seem like much to you, but if you're lost in a world and you want a diet coke, you really have to have a way to get it without taking off the whole augmented reality gear. You know what I mean? This means you can also use the restroom. Okay, so that's how that's how this stuff will work. This thing is、um, uh, the return of binaural sound. For those of you who were here 150 years ago. We did this、uh, at the very first brown bag tech launch, and it's now come back around. Why? We can't really play with augmented reality yet in a classroom. Not not quite yet. But when you're in a world that's 360, you've got to have 360 sound. And the way you do that is with microphones like this. So it's called binaural sound. And the way it works is by feeding mic sounds in the same way it feeds in your ears. And I'll show you how this works.、Um, Uh, if you're, unless you're in the front row, lean forward、uh, to the person in front of you and just say, "I'm behind you." Lean forward and just say, "I'm behind you." I know it's going to take a ripple. I realize that. Okay, does it sound like the person's behind you? Did it? Yes, but why? All the sound comes from the front. Your ears are here. So look at these things. So these are the devices. They're structured just like the human ear. So the microphone faces backward through a cup, which means that as you hear it, your brain is able to put behind and over here and over here because you don't have an ear in the back of your head. From the time you were little, your brain programmed to realize when stuff was behind. So when you record this way, it's the same thing. It's shaped like a human ear. Anybody recognize that ear? 
Adam Bellows here, ladies and gentlemen. So if you go on eBay, these things are 300 bucks, but you can also go get them for like $10. So your kids can take a simple set of headphones, put condenser mics on them, and then you're, when you play it back through headphones, you don't just hear left and right, you hear here, here, and behind. And if you want to, I put a sound online, you can go here and actually download it. Don't do it now, wait till Leslie starts. But you can download it, put in headsets, and I, I drafted a couple of NYU students I found to actually do left and right, and we do it all the way around. So these are things your kids can play with really right now. So T speaking of again? Leslie starting, you got two minutes, just letting you know. Okay, two minutes. So now I want to do the last thing. This is the last thing. It actually works out. Thank you, uh, Leslie. This is called the pentatonic scale. And it's a great way to demonstrate, by the way, how you can teach a couple of things and then students will infer the rest, which is pretty cool. If you want to know how this works with um, the... Um, with, um, here's a way to explain it, this is something that's saying, but the reason there's certain universi universality for the, for a pentatonic scale, and we're going to do this right now. So I'm going to go over here, we're going to go back to the iPad, I'm going to quit out of Taylor, and we're going to launch something so you can see it called Soundbeam. And this is a Bobby McFerrin thing. Bobby McFerrin did this, uh, has done this at like a uh, neurologist conference for a long time. We're going to do it, we're going to do this. So it's a, but I'm just going to add a little tech thing to what, uh, what McFerrin has done. So you with, you want to try this? Are you with me with this? This, I've tried this once, it completely failed. You, you want to help me with this one though? You have to say yes. yes. Okay, good. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to, it's fun to do just with the class anyway. I'm going to sound, a, assign a sound to each spot. And this spot is going to be this sound. Right here. So let's, can do this sound for me. Uh, uh, uh. Do it. You have to do it. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, the front's doing a lot better. This sound over here is this. Uh, ready? Uh, 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 uh. With me? See, you knew! How did you know? Anyway, that's what it is. The pentatonic scale, it's a lot of fun. Try it with a class. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you. Well, that was just awesome. Yeah, but right. what I'll say, Hall, you know, that is very cool. I really am excited about that. Thanks for showing my ear. But what you will all remember most is when someone leaned forward and said, I'm behind you. <laughs> when you have a nightmare today, just thank Hall. There you go. All right, so without further ado, Leslie Fisher. Hi, kids. How are we? Come on. Welcome to TechShare Live. All right, so thank you for being here. You guys look great. I have, oh gosh, 19 minutes and 50 seconds. Let's just jump into this. First of all, I want to talk about two of my favorite classroom tools right now, and we are going to Kahoot. Who, who does not know what Kahoot is? Please raise your hands. It's okay to be proud if you do not know what Kahoot is. Who does know what Kahoot is? Who is so excited that we're going to Kahoot, but you're bitter you're in the back because now you know you're going to lose because you're not close enough to the screen? Uh, so what Kahoot is, Kahoot, it's one of the coolest pieces of software or website out there right now. You can get to it at getkahoot.com. And what this allows you to do is it allows any student with any device with a web connection to be able to participate together in a quiz. And it's a really cool thing. So what I want to do is I want to get us joining into this quiz, and then I'll talk about the game dynamics with you. Because here's the deal. If we get over 700 of you to be part of the quiz, we will set the world's record for the world's largest Kahoot. But if we get 2,281 of you, we will set the Guinness world record for the largest quiz ever. So let's see if we can do this. So what I'm going to do is I've created a quiz that's all about FETC trivia. And I've already created it in Kahoot. And I'm going to click on play. And it's going to load this quiz. And I'm going to let you right, know right now that the gang at Kahoot in London are staring at the servers just hoping and thinking happy thoughts. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on play. You're going to go to your mobile device and you are going to go to your web browser. And when you go to your web browser, you are going to go to kahoot.it, kahoot.it. 
When you go there, it's going to ask you for a game pin. Your game pin is right there. Aaron, where are you? You're first. Where are you, Aaron? Where's our first? Nice work. Let's hear it for Aaron. All right, your game pin, 550651. Look at you go. The first number we want to try to hit is how many? How many do we need to hit to get the Kahoot world record? 700. Let's go. I don't know. This is fun. I could just watch this. Love the music. If you're liking the music, please get in the room first and then sway to the music, okay? I really would love a webcam at the Kahoot office right now. Once again, show me who has never cahooted before. Where are you if you have never cahooted before? Uh, I can't wait to show you this. All right, just a couple hundred away from Kahoot's world record. Oh, guys, we're getting close. Congratulations, and we are at least going to uh, set the record for the largest Kahoot ever to happen, so congratulations. Let me explain the game dynamics, and can I get them to, um, well, let me actually, uh, can you kill my, my audio? So let me explain the game dynamics as you guys are logging in. First off, if you have never Kahooted before, you're going to lose because you've got to get used to the game dynamics. So just get over it now, look at the person next to you and go, I need a hug, and they'll hug you, and it'll be okay. So how it's going to work, guys, is on my screen and my screen only, you are going to see the question. Below the question is going to be four possible answers. Each of those answers have a solid colored background. You guys with me so far? Behind each color or next to it is a symbol, an icon, in case you're colorblind. So that's what you're going to see on my screen. On your device, all you're going to see are the four corresponding colors to the text that's up here. You don't see the text, you just see the colors. And you see the symbol. So when I ask the question, you identify what you think the answer is. You find that color or that symbol. You click it on your phone, and your answer has been logged. Does the basics make sense? Yes? Do we want to try to wait a second to see if we hit 1,000? Who's, who's still logging in? Who wants to admit, who wants to admit that you're actually using two devices right now to <laughs> that to me? Does anyone, anyone trying three devices? I would tweet this out, but the problem is, is they don't see the questions. They just, they just, uh, you know, see that. So, all right, let's wait 35 more and I'll get started. I don't think we're going to get the world record, but maybe we can try next year if I get to come back and you get to come back. Who knows? We can try it again. That way, bring all your devices and let's just kill the internet. We got to hit a thousand people. Do you think we can do it? Let's do this. Come on. Oh, I think we just lost a couple people. People are like, I'm out. I can't handle this pressure. <laughs> Let's play. Oh, do you think we stopped Kahoot's numbers? Look, maybe they cap at 987. Ah, oh, there's no way. There's too many people. We'll get Kahoot. Don't worry, Kahoot's been following me on, on Twitter. They must have to cap at 987. But look at you guys go. Yeah! All right, guys, are you ready to Kahoot? All right, good luck to all of you. Uh, over a thousand of you will lose. Get over it. Yeah, people can still join. So feel free to join. Kahoot will keep following the numbers. When was the first FETC conference? Majority 
of you got it right. Nice job. The faster you answer correctly, the more points you get. The faster you answer incorrectly, who the heck cares? You were wrong. Let's see who our winner is. Gail! Is that you, Gail? Who knows? Oh, James Bond. Oh, there's a, look at you guys coming in. Samantha, lots of people, piles of ties. Here's our next one. FETC attracted attendees from how many countries around the world? Good luck, guys. This is so much fun. Can you believe that? 48 countries. How many of you are visiting us that do not live in the United States? Please raise your hands. Let's welcome these people here to the conference. All right. There we go. Oh, who's Matt R? Where's Matt R? Where are you? There you go. Nice job. Let's hear for him. Everyone's like, Matt, I'm going to kick your butt. Let's go. Next question. The longest lines to be found at FETC are at the distribution point for what coveted souvenir? And by the way, I'm only giving you 10 seconds each to answer the coffee mug. Woo! T-shirt came close. Matt, 100 points, Matt. Question four, which of the following has not been an FETC opening keynote speaker? Ah, Ray Bradbury was a speaker at FETC. Can you believe that? So here we go, our last question. Ooh, Jimmy and Mary. Where are you, Jimmy and Mary? Good luck to you guys. Here's our last question. What color was the FETC 2014 Souvenir T-shirt distributed at the closing session? Where's our grand prize winner? Point at, point at them, jump up and down. Let's hear it for Jamie! You're the grand prize winner of our admi ad admiration for you getting it correct. So thank you so much for that. So I'm gonna end the quiz now. This is where you can give me feedback. Did you, did you enjoy taking this quiz? Did you not like taking this quiz? Did it make you happy? Did it make you sad? How many of you would use this in your classroom? Yep, awesome. How many of you have already used this in your classroom? Fantastic. And now I'm going to go and say final results. And when I say final results, I can actually download the results. And when I download the results, I can download them in the form of an Excel spreadsheet. So I can actually open up a spreadsheet and I can take a look at how you guys did. So I can keep this, obviously put this into whatever uh, software I'm using. And let's, let's hide. So Jamie. You were the only person to get every single question correct. So, nice work. Nice work. So that is what she wins our respect. That's all she really ever needs to just So that is called a uh, Kahoot, and it's something I really, really love. The next thing I want to show you is, because I know some of you have probably said, well, you know what? I only have one device in my classroom. Kahoot's great, but I teach uh, elementary school kids, and, and what can I use? Well, this, there's something called Plickers. Who has not heard of Plickers? Who has not heard of Plickers? Can I please see your hands? So to get information about Plickers, you can simply head to the website plickers.com. And how Plickers works, is once you log in, you can create a library of questions. I'm not going to show them because it will show the answer. But I can also go in here and I can create classes. And then what I do is I then assign questions to classes. When I create a class, they are numbered. So I have a number for each kid. And if you look closely, you'll realize that I am the teacher to the gang from South Park. These are all South Park characters that I have in here. So I then went into the audience and I handed out 
Will you hold them up, guys? These cards. So I have up to 63 of these cards. So I can have 63 people at once do this. If you're teaching more than 63 kids at once in your school, we need to talk. So I then hand these cards out. The questions that I ask are just like Kahoot, A, B, C, and D. So then what this card has on it, it has on it A, B, C, and D. So when I ask a question, the student looks, they make sure that their answer is pointing up to the ceiling, and they place it here. Is that making sense so far, guys? And once again, how many of you have not seen this before? I'm curious how many of you haven't seen Plickers. Cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the teacher side of it. Usually, I would go here into Live View, and I would ask the question and display it in Live View. But I want to show you, as the educator, where this magic is kicking in. So the question I'm going to ask is approximately how many companies are expected to exhibit at FETC? And it's A is 200, B 300, C 400, D 500. That's the question I'm going to ask. And as a teacher, I would normally leave it here because obviously you don't want to that you don't want to show the students answering it correctly and correctly, etc. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my iPad because my iPad is running the Plickers app. So let me open up the Plickers app, and then let me put this in full screen so we're not staring at Nibbler. I'm then going to click on my wacky presenter class, and you'll notice these are the two questions that I've loaded up. So the question I'm going to ask is approximately, once again, how many companies are exhibiting here? So hey, guys, hold up your answers for me, please. So they're going to hold their answers up, and I'm going to click on the camera, and I'm going to sweep across. And you're noticing that what it's doing is it's capturing what they've answered. Oh my god, you can't get Kenny. They killed Kenny! <laughs> I hope you realize for comedic purposes, I did not distribute the Kenny number. That was an awesome setup, and Adam took my joke, but it's okay, because I love Sorry. him. It's all right. So, I now, just by scanning, did you see how quickly and how far away it did that? Just by scanning across the room, I was able to capture all their answers. And now I can click, whoops, cancel, don't want to do that. I want to say yes, accept that. And now it shows me who answered it correctly, who answered it incorrectly. And all of this is also going into my web copy as well. So I can go ahead and keep it, export it, whatever I need. Just like Kahoot. Clickers is absolutely free. So how many of you think you would use that in your classroom? Pretty cool, huh? And by the way, they make the cards in all shapes and sizes. In fact, they're coming out with corrugated uh, cardboard uh, cards. And you can have multiple classes. So if you're a middle school or high school, you can have multiple classes and assign questions to those classes, which is great. OK, so the next thing I want to show you, let me go back to my slides. I find those help quite a bit, is I want to talk about some of my favorite gadgets. And I have a very important announcement to make, people. Underoos are back. <laughs> this is an exciting day. I think one of us on this stage is wearing them right now. Not going to name any names. But yes, underoos are back. <laughs> <laughs> So last year, how many of you were in the tech share last year? So last year, I showed you something from Australia, which was a string of lights. You guys remember that? Well, guess what? We beat them to the punch. These are lumen plays. And would you be my no, Vano White for me, my dear? These are lumen plays. And what these are, these are not Christmas lights, people. These are holiday lights. So Adam, can I get oh, you to yes, come over course. here? Venom, whatever you need. So, thank you, my dear. So these are holiday lights. This is only one string. I can get as many, I can actually 500 uh, lights can be stringed together if you're crazy enough to do that. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my Lumen Play app. And let's hear it for Adam for being my Vanna. This is very sweet of him. So I'm going to switch over to my Lumen Play app. And so right now, it's looking for my strand of lights. I click on yes. This is my strand of lights. It's going to connect. Once in a while, it takes a moment. I'll, I'll forgive it. Not seeing your Lumen Plays? You know, I'm not seeing my Lumen Plays. This would I make me them. sad. I see them too. They're right there. It's a lot more fun, though, when they actually show up here. So where is a yay? 
So now that I've connected them, I have all of these preset things that I can do. I can change each of these lights individually if I wanted to. So right now, I simply have it set to one color, which is that blue. You look, you look awesome. Thanks. So this is my controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I want to change the color. So right now it's only blue, but I'm going to click on plus, and let's add that green that was part of last year's shirt. Whoa! So now I can go in here and I'll say I'll accept that green, and now you'll see that I have both colors. But you know what? Let's add a little bit more fun. Let's add some red to that. So I'll add some red, click there, and now I have that added to the string. Holiday lights, people! These are Mardi Gras lights. They're St. Patrick's lights. Valid, you never have to take them off your house. <laughs> you never have to take them off your house. The neighbors can't do anything. Your Christmas lights are still up. Oh, no, they're not. Happy St. Patrick's Day. So now that I've done that, but wait, there's more. Uh, I'll click here on FX, and I have all of these different effects that I can do to these lights. So I can actually create about 30 different effects to these lights. And let me show you my, my favorite shit. There we go. I love how it kind of runs across the string. And then what I can do is I can speed it up. I can slow it down. I can change its direction. And this is the number one question I always get about these. Yeah, but can it visualize to music? Oh, yes, it can. There's a music visualizer. So I can go in here and say select song, click on a song, and it will automatically pump and change the lights. <laughs> Singing and dancing. You do it all here at FBTC. So those are Lumen Plays, and wow. I know what you're saying. Leslie, why didn't you show this to me before Christmas? My house would have rocked. The good news is because I'm showing it to you after Christmas, they are 50% off right now. Right now, this string of lights is only $40 for the starter string, and each additional string is $30. So it's a really, really cool thing. How many of you are like, Leslie just cost me money? I know, aren't they awesome? Holiday lights, people, holiday lights. All right, so let's go ahead and, and let's move on. Yeah, they're called Lumen Plays, Lumen Plays. Uh, really, really cool stuff. Um, I really don't think I, I need to tell you about this product. I think I should just show it to you. This is called Bunch of Balloons. Keep watching, keep watching, keep watching, keep watching. World domination, people. World domination. Invite your neighbor kids over. Don't tell anyone. These are $17 for a bunch of 100 balloons. You tie it to the hose attachment, your garden hose. It fills up within seconds, and then you can start pummeling the other kids. It's a brilliant thing. <laughs> so did we, did we say that I had a couple? You got two minutes left. Two All right, minutes, let's Two and a half minutes. Let's be generous. Let's, be, let's do two. Let, we'll do two and a half minutes. Um, I don't know about you, but as, a, as an iPhone user, I'm really excited about Apple Pay. Apple Pay's been great. I've used Apple Pay, but oh, it's me. Uh, put the slide back on. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but uh, you're not going to just only use Apple Pay. So this is called Plastic, and this might be your favorite credit card when it comes out this summer. How Plastic works is Plastic hooks up to an iPhone, and they're working on the Android device right now put a dongle into your iPhone, and then you slide in your credit card. When you slide in your credit card, it automatically embeds itself into this plastic card. So I can take five, six, seven credit cards, slide, 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 and I have them all on one credit card. So when it's time to pay for something, that front screen at the bottom is actually an LED. I click on it, I select the card that I want to use, that LED changes into that specific credit card, the chip changes into that specific credit card, and the stripe on the back changes into that specific credit card. Really slick, but it gets slicker. What I like about it is how many of you guys lose your hotel keys? I do it all the time. This is anything that has a stripe. So this becomes for your hotel room. This becomes for your loyalty cards. This becomes for your membership cards. Anything that has a stripe can be coded into it. Let's say you're like me and you accidentally leave it somewhere. When you get 30 feet away from it, Bluetooth kicks in and it says you are far away from your card. Do you know this? If you don't say you know this, it locks the card down and no one can use it. 
and it even puts up a phone number to call you. Yeah, the price is a little steep, $155, but just as I say jokingly, shut up and take my money because I can't wait to get my mittens on this. So that's called plastic. All right, I think I'm out of time. If I cost you money, just remember Kahoot and Plickers are free. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Well, that, that was awesome and educational, and thank you for making me dance. Didn't know that was happening, and I didn't mean to take your joke. It's okay. It's great minds, twisted minds think alike, I guess, is more like it. So anyway, we are now in our wow round, which is, you know, each of the presenters here have saved one thing that they really, really, really want to show you. It's their creme de la creme, the piece de resistance, whatever you want to say. So we're going to start it off. We're going to go back down the line, so we'll go back to Kathy. And Kathy, please give us a wow. Okay. Well, I just bought Lumen Play, by the way, so... Um, there's, a, there's a couple left for other people. Just make sure you get the starter set, because it doesn't include the other part. All right, so I wanted to talk about the Uni by Motion Savvy. It was created by deaf students at RIT, and it allows the user to sign with the tablet in their hand, and it translates the signs into speech to allow more natural conversation with those that are not hard of hearing. It also captures the voice of the person speaking back to the signer and converts it into text. So it's an Indiegogo project right now, and it's $198. And once you have the device, there's a $20 subscription fee, because of course it needs to go to their server to do this. So let's take a look at it. So that was my wow, and Carmen Sandu is now going home. That's awesome. That's really, really cool. All right, Hall, take it away. Wow us. All right, great. I actually, uh, we had 10 minutes, so I, I stuck in more than one. For, first is a wow, though, that's um, uh, just a weird wow. It's, um, <laughs> how many of you know that it's dangerous to text while you're driving? Right? So this is a car ad. I swear I just taped it on my phone off of the television. This is the ad. See if you can detect a slightly dangerous behavior in this uh, vehicle. When you're in your car as much as I am, it kind of has to become a part of you. My name is Jen, and this is my new Ford Escape. All of the features are amazing. It's really great on gas, so it's very efficient, and then it's also very powerful. My phone stays in my purse, and it's seen. I take conference calls. I do paperwork. What? <laughs> Did you see the keyboard in there? <laughs> it's like, no, I catch up on paperwork. So <laughs> it's an ad. It's a Ford Escape. Look it up. It's a, you want to see it again? No. OK, so anyway, find it. It's really a real ad. OK, so here's some real wows. Um, this is what's coming in 3D printing. I've got, got uh, a few of these. One, these are composite filaments. So how, anybody have a 3D printer in your school? They're hugely important for what's going to be coming. So here are new ways you can print out. It's a limestone filament, a filament that looks and acts like limestone. You've got maple. You've got bronze. These are coming out. And you've got iron, which means you can actually magnetize it. You can... Uh, uh, use a burr on it, lots of other kinds of stuff. That's what's happening with 3D printing. So the future as we see it really is coming pretty quickly. And a lot of you have those 3D printers in your schools getting bigger. So this is, a, this is a, that's the first wow, because that's going to really be pretty huge, I think. Here's another one. Uh, two, two big uh, things that came out. One, the Oculus. So here's, this is a, a, a standard video that came off a, a Discovery aired this, but it's about inside the human cell. This battlefield was once a healthy human cell. Now, it's disintegrating into tiny pieces. 
A virus has overrun its defenses and unleashed an army of clones. So that's, that's what we know actually soldiers. happens now inside a cell. Now let's go to CES and look at what the Ocul inside the Oculus really looks like. So this is, they're starting with the gamer phase. And you can see this is a car that's blown up. And then the, your viewer, as you're walking, you actually walk through the inside of the exploding car. Uh, you see the rubble flying around. So that's good for gamers, but think about what that's going to mean when we're going to be able to go in and walk around inside a human cell as this stuff takes place. So it's sort of like what we saw with the Taylor Swift video. This is stuff that's already happening. So this was funded by uh, the hundreds of millions by uh, Facebook, who just bought them, and they're now doing that kind of thing with this. This is the, um, the last thing that's showing. This is another thing that was funded with um, venture capital. In this case, it was Google. Google funded this augmented reality. It's called the Magic Leap. It's called the Magic Leap. I'm going to show you the only thing that exists out there now for it. It's called the Magic Leap. And it's augmented reality that exists in real objects like your own hands. And they use things like locators. You know, you saw a little bit of the hint of the Bluetooth proximity stuff. But the idea is you'll be able to do things like this. And what I'll show you again is the only thing I can find on the web that demonstrates it. But Google just put half a billion dollars into this company and this technology. So this is what it looked like. Here's a set of hands. So it's going to be a very nifty world, don't you think? <laughs> oh, that's an elephant, and I'm sure the other animals will come soon. OK. Last thing, and this is, this is kind of a serious thing, but I think it's very cool. Um, and then I'll, I'll turn it over to Leslie. Got time, I got time. This is, we talked about 3D printing. And again, to me, that's sort of really where a lot of the wow is. So I was in, a, in a, um, an operation in Houston where they'd 3D rendered a heart. They'd 3D rendered uh, a human heart because they were going to do a valve thing. You could see it on a screen. You actually, you know, they take pictures of it, and then the doctors can manipulate it and actually go in and see what it looks like and whether or not the procedure is going to work. Well, the next step for this is when you print out what it looks, what the patient's innards are, and you can actually go in and play practice and see if it's going to work. So this is a case where they actually did it. It's kind of serious, but it has a good outcome. This is a 3D printed uh, human heart. This is a 3D printed heart of a four-year-old girl with complex congenital heart disease who had undergone two previous operations as a, as a baby uh, who was dying. Uh, her veins from her heart were obstructed, and she could barely uh, get around in school. She was losing weight. She, um, is about half the weight of a, of a child normally her age. And uh, this was printed out because she was thought to be inoperable. And by having this type of model, we were able to con conceive of an operation that hadn't been done before, connecting the small veins from her lungs up to her heart. And that was done with parts from another person's heart who had died and donated their heart. Her operation was extremely successful and she's recovering very well in the, um, in the hospital now, and it's just about ready to go home. And now her life, instead of being uh, measured in terms of days and weeks, is going to be measured in terms of years and decades. So anyway, that's, that's a pretty cool story. And it's why we want to have kids explore these technologies that you're here to learn about at FETC. 3D printer seems like a simple thing. Kids print out little, little uh, screws, or they print out little, little lane badges. But when we pair it with scanners, we're moving it into a very real thing. And that's my final wow. Thank you very much. It's very, very cool. Yeah, yeah. Wow, you guys are giving me all piles of time. That's crazy. Hi, kids. Uh, the final number was 1,072 of you. Set the world's largest kahoot. In my humble opinion, I think that's going to be pretty tough to break. So kudos to you. So what I want to finish with is I want to finish with augmented reality. And Hall just showed you a little bit of augmented reality. And where are the people that were so awesome and showed up to my morning little augmented reality share? Hello again. Uh, this to me, I, I, was not a, I did not learn well in, in school. I had a really tough time because I'm a visual learner and not a text learner. And as I see, though, don't mind me, I'm getting, I'm getting a 
tweet it. Uh, as I see augmented reality, it allows a visual learner to learn. So I want to share with you three of my favorite apps right now that are uh, available in augmented reality. And I'm going to start with one I showed last year. Who was here when I showed the app Color? C-O-L-A-R. So if you weren't here, what Color allows you to do is it allows you to take a coloring page, you print it from their website, and then it turns it into interactive augmented reality. But the cool thing is, is their latest coloring page. This is an animal cell. So you download this page from Color, you color it in, and so I'm going to run the Color app. And if you've never seen, who hasn't seen Color before? So what this allows you to do is it allows you to turn any color page uh, into an interactive augmented reality page. So I'm pointing it here, it's going to identify it, and there's my colored in animal cell. Now listen, they have more entertaining pages on their website. So you can download cool things like Christmas trees and birds and all that stuff. And if you've never seen this before, what this means is you can share it with your students. And then when you return to class, you don't have to talk to them for a day or two. So it's, it's perfect. Or when you go home, you can go home to the parent watching your kids and look like a superhero. So why I'm really excited about this page is not just the fact that we're looking at something like an animal cell, but I can click here on this little uh, light bulb at the bottom, it just broke the cell up, and I'm going to click again, and it's going to quiz me. So what part is that, kids? It turned red. Do we know? Yeah! I'm right! Yay me! Okay, what's this part? Nucleus. Nucleus. All right, so now I'm going to have to just get wrong, one wrong. So. Ah, so I love the fact that now we're taking something fun like coloring and we're turning it into something with augmented reality and we're still quizzing them. We're still assessing um, our students, which is great. <laughs> so that is, that is color and that is the latest coloring page. The next one I want to share with you is the Guinness Book of World Records. The Guinness Book of World Records has 30 pages in it that support augmented reality. And I say this joke every year, and it's the truth, that I suffer from something called ADOS, which you, if you have not heard it, it's attention deficit, ooh, shiny. And I can't keep focus for more than a minute. So when I see a page like this, and this is a page of the world's tallest person ever, the, the smallest person ever, the largest person ever, this is where me, as a visual learner, yeah, I'm looking at pictures, but I'm really not getting a real-world representation to what this really means. I look at the page, I move on. So on this page right here, it actually says augmented reality alert. So this means that I can run the Guinness World Record app and I can see it in augmented reality. So I'm going to place this page down on the ground. I am going to run the Guinness World Record app. Thank you, Hall. <laughs> it takes a moment for the app to boot up. And I'm going to select out of the 30 pages, I'm going to select the page for the world's tallest man ever. And it's going to say to me to point at the page. So I'm going to point at the page. And there's his foot. So let me start backing up. And I can show you just how tall the world's tallest man was. So, hey, Hall, why don't you go stand next to the tallest man, and let's see where you come up to the world's tallest man. So that's actually, <laughs> so that is, and, and he's also tilted. So do you see how he's standing on my chair? That's why he's not the world's tallest man. He's standing on my chair. Let's try it again. I was like, he's not that small. I, I thought it was huge. No, yeah, you're, yeah, sure, in your mind. You're, you're taking me down a peg. So it's catching on. It looks like it's catching on to that bag over there. But I think you guys get the idea. So you can have someone stand right next to the world's tallest man. And you can actually say, instead of, I saw a picture of it, you could say, do you know I come up to the elbow or the waist of the tallest man ever? And to me, that is... To me, that is such a more teachable and learning moment than just simply looking at it on a page. So love that. The next one is, where are my chemistry teachers? Where are you? Where are the ones that teach the periodic table of elements? Where are you? Isn't that fun when a kid walks into the class and it's time to teach it? Aren't the kids excited? Is today the day we're going to use the period? Oh, I can't wait. I'm sure that happens to you every day. They're actually sitting outside your class waiting for you to come in. So 
This is an augmented reality app called Elements 4D. Who has not seen this app before? I want to get a feel if you have not seen this app before. So when you download this app, it's absolutely free. And you have the option, if you want to, to download these paper blocks. And then you fold them, you tape them, and you turn them into blocks. The company that makes the software was sweet enough to give me a pre-release of these little wooden blocks that they're going to be coming out with at an insanely reasonable price. So I have these nice little wooden blocks. So what I'm going to do is I am going to run Elements 4D. And these wooden blocks have each of the main elements on them. So let's start with copper. And here's copper. So now I know. So now I know what copper looks like. I have an idea of, of its volume. And I can go ahead and I can change this. And as I change this, once in a while it will, there we go, here's chromium. And I can go ahead and I can change this. And I can get a feeling for what each of these look like. And I'm getting a visual representation. How cool is that? Now, some of these, though, are not as exciting as other ones. For example, oxygen. <laughs> not that exciting. Not to be outdone, our friend hydrogen. Oh, boy, that's exciting, huh? Anyone know what should happen? How you doing? I know. I know. I agree. I totally agree. So what was so funny was when this app first came out, listen, I, I really struggled in school. I looked at the periodic table of elements, and I got the fake cold, the fake headache, the fake whatever the heck you needed. When these blocks showed up, I'm in a hotel room. Do you combine? Do you combine? Do you? Ah, oh, damn it, I'm learning. They got me. And it's so funny because now at my advanced age, I can tell you all about these little elements because I've seen them visually. I've held them in my hand. And I know their volume. I know what they look like. I know what they combine to make. And once again, that is why I'm so excited about augmented reality. It's some really cool stuff. So I, that's my time. Do you, do you have a wow, young man? That sounded personal. It, it did thank you, everyone. Personal. Yeah, thank you. Um, all right, so I, I, well, I don't have a wow, but uh, <laughs> I, thank you for asking me. Um, wow. Anyway, I, I do want to wrap this up by saying that I think, first of all, I, I think this is the third year I've been doing this with you guys, and this was so much fun to learn about, like, you know, both whether it's augmented reality or I did buy that Blue Smart. So I don't know if it's like they bought Lumen Plays. Craziness. I watched them. Yeah. So I, I, I feel like we are we are on the burgeoning edge of something really exciting, and and seeing where augmented's going, seeing where you know whether it's trackers and systems. I mean, there's so many different things that are coming our, our way that it's just really exciting. So I, I do want to say thank you so much for coming. It's going to be a great conference. Make sure, see, I, yeah, there you go. Uh, I'm showing slides, people. Anyway, so. Um, and make sure, make sure that you come today at 3 o'clock to see the keynote speaker, our first keynote speaker, Jane McGonigal. And uh, there she is. She is an expert on gamification and education. And, and uh, it's just an incredible, incredible time to, to learn about those things. And um, I would also say, please use the MyFETC. And what am I supposed to tell people? And have a wonderful, wonderful FETC. Make sure you connect, make sure you talk to each other, and learn something awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you.